Can micro brands be collectible? This is a question that comes up pretty often when I make videos about micro brands. And in my opinion, there are two different camps when it comes to micro brands. Some collectors are 100% on board with micro brands. They see the value offered for the dollar spent. Most micros offer a spec sheet a mile long for what seems like a very low sum of money. However, others disagree and don't see the value in these small brands. Many complain about subpar quality and brand image or lack thereof. A major complaint is also lack of history. I have to admit, I am a fan of micro brands and over my years of collecting watches, I have seen the overall quality improve dramatically when it comes to finishing and overall final product from micro brands. However, two of the biggest complaints that I often hear about micro brands are their lack of movement choices and the fact that they are made in just a handful of factories in Asia. Now, we all know that a lot of micro brands like to use a handful of movements. We're talking about the Miyota 8 series, the Miyota 9000 series, the Seiko NH35, and of course, the Salita SW200. Very popular movements. So those run the gamut between lower end micro brands and higher end micro brands. Most higher end micro brands are using that SW200. But honestly, if you rewind just 20 or 30 years ago, the Swiss industry wasn't much different from the micro brand industry of today. Many of the major brands we know out of Switzerland all used ETA movements. Whether off the shelf or slightly or heavily modified, they all came from just a handful of sources. Even Rolex used ETA movements. The Holy Trinity used Lemania based movements for most of their chronographs. And there was a lot of crossover between brands and movements used. So there were just a handful of movements being used by many different brands. Very similar to what's going on in the micro brand industry today. Also, now with large watch groups, conglomerates like Swatch Group, LVMH, and Richemont, most of these Swiss watch manufacturers are under three large umbrellas. So that means most of these watches are all coming out of the same factories which is kind of ironic because I get a lot of complaints of people saying that this watch from a micro brand is made in the same factory as this watch from another micro brand. Well, every micro brand can have its own factory and that's just the way it is because it would be very, very expensive and they would be a major brand. And even these major brands are sharing parts, they're sharing movements, they're sharing the know-how and that's how it works in the micro brand industry as well. Maybe on a smaller scale, but that's just the way it is. Micro brands are more agile. They are able to change their production based on customer feedback quickly, implement and update designs on the fly, and that's why we often see version two, version three, four, and five of a micro brand watch model. They evolve with customer feedback. Last but not least, they are exclusive. Most only create small batches of watches, limited runs which often sell out, and that's based off of the fact that they don't have a lot of money to spend. And one of the greatest aspects of owning a micro brand, you will often never see another one out in the wild. So with that low price tag comes exclusivity, which is very different from a major brand. I work in a major city and I often walk around the city to get lunch, to go get coffee and things like that. And when I'm walking around, I see tons of Omegas, I see tons of Seikos, I see tons of Rolexes. However, I have yet to see another person wearing a Zelos or a Notice. They're extremely rare. It's kind of ironic that they cost less money and you see them less often, which is really one of the perks of owning a micro brand in my opinion. So that brings up the question, can a micro brand actually become a collectible? And in my opinion, the answer is yes. In the future, as a handful of these smaller micro brands up their quality and produce better and better watches, they will eventually become major brands. Some great examples of this are brands like Manta, Christopher Ward, Formex, and Ming. And these are really good examples because these were all technically micro brands at some point, and now I would call them independent brands or micro independent brands and even major brands, they all have their own design DNA. They look really good. They have amazing quality. And that's because they keep on upping and stepping up their game. 
And a lot of these watches are going to be collectibles, especially brands like Ming, who make them extremely limited. Brands like Laurier, Baltic, Zelos, and Notice, who are much smaller, however, I believe are on their way in the same direction as those other brands I just mentioned. They're upping the game, they're making better watches, they're putting better movements in them, and they're trying to move and make changes with the market, with the customer's feedback. And they're doing it on a daily basis, which is not something that larger brands can do. And that's what's gonna make the difference, I think, in the future. Eventually, this will change for them as they get bigger, but right now, they're able to adapt. And one day, these very limited watches could enter the realm of collectability as they become more and more popular and the scarcity of the older models could become sought after. Now, not all micro brands fall into this category. I think there are very, very few that actually do. And I'm not sure that all of these little micro brands will survive throughout the years. However, those that do and they up their quality and they stick to a plan, I think they will become collectible in the future as they become more popular. They're selling more watches. More and more watches are going out into the market. Those original versions, those very scarce, very rare examples that sold out immediately when they first started out, those will be collectible. Of course, the quality on those will be lower, but that's the same thing with vintage watches and uh, uh, major brands. It's the same story. Really, if you are into micro brands, collect them, enjoy them. Don't worry if they're gonna be collectible. I always say that, however, I think that they are heading in the same direction that Swiss brands did, uh, and eventually they will be accepted by the mainstream completely. Could be collectible in the future, who knows? Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I think I made some really good arguments here, really good points about the collectability and overall general appeal of a micro brand, never mind their collectability, but their appeal, there's a lot to like about a micro brand, um, and the future is bright. Anyway, tell me what you guys think in the comments below. I really wanna hear from you guys. Please also don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, it's super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.